Today's inauguration program will be recorded and available for playback following the ceremony. Please take this time to silence all cellular phones and refrain from using any recording devices. Today's program will begin shortly. Thank you.
Thank you. Everyone can now be seated. Southern Utah University is honored to welcome you to the inauguration ceremony of our 17th president, Mindy Benson. The university is proud to host a number of special guests for today's program. Please stand as your name is read and remain standing. Those seated on the platform today include the governor of the state of Utah, Spencer J. Cox. Utah's Lieutenant Governor, Deidre Henderson. From the Utah State Legislature, Senator Evan Vickers and Representative Rex Ship. From the Utah Board of Higher Education, Vice Chair Jessalee Anderson, Stan Albrecht, Richard Wheeler, and Stacey Betridge. Commissioner of the Utah System of Higher Education, Dave R. Wolstenhume. Senior Director, Executive Director of Statewide Online Education and immediate past president of SUU, Scott L. Wyatt. We are also privileged to host former presidents Michael T. Benson, Stephen D. Benyon, and interim president Richard E. Kendall. From the SUU Board of Trustees, Chair Jody Hart Wilson, Vice Chair Eric Schmutz, and Trustees Beverly Burgess, Marilee Eyre, McKay Pullman, Katie Wankier, Lance Hatch, Sydney Nacken, and Michael Wankier. <laughs> Representing the Paiute Indian Tribe of Utah, Travis N. Parashant. Today's marshal who led the procession with the SUU Mace is Shauna Mendini, Dean of the College of Performing and Visual Arts. <laughs> Administrative officers of the university on the dais are John Anderson, Marvin Dodge, Stuart Jones, Jared Tippetts, Todd Brown, and Merrick, Mary, Maureen Redeker, and deans Jean Boreen, Jim Brandt, Tony Oliver, and Mary Pearson. From Southwest Technical College, President Brennan Wood. Representing the Western Athletic Conference, Commissioner Brian Thornton. <laughs> Participating in the program today will be David Lee, Steve Young, Jason Matlock, and Abigail Larson. And we welcome the 17th president of Southern Utah University, Mindy Benson. In addition to our platform guests, we are pleased to welcome and recognize representatives from Utah's congressional offices, members of the Utah State Legislature, county and city elected officials, presidents and delegates representing colleges and universities all across the state, local religious leaders, and President Benson's family. Please join in welcoming all of our special guests to SUU's 17th Presidential Inauguration Ceremony. At this time, we ask all to rise. The posting of the colors will be conducted by the SUU Army ROTC. The national anthem will be performed by the SUU choirs, wind symphony, and symphony orchestra, conducted by Schwinn Soon.
Thank you. Please be seated. Today's processional music, the Washington Post March, was performed by the SUU Wind Symphony and Symphony Orchestra and conducted by Dr. Andrew Briggs. SUU wishes to acknowledge and honor the indigenous communities of this region as original possessors, stewards, and inhabitants of this Tuvip, or land, and recognize that the university is situated on the traditional homelands of the Nungwu, Southern Paiute people. Please welcome Travis N. Parashans from the Paiute Indian Tribe of Utah to offer a traditional Southern Utah, Southern Paiute blessing. Buffalo robe, Sundance robe. It'd be a blessing for her and the people of this institution, Moan. Takaroi sang, Emeikang Moana. Mavuku young, Ichida necklace, a medallion for her, for making history for our people in Southern Utah, this community, the faculty, staff, her family, and all the students who come to this institution. Dignitaries, people, small and tall, bless them at all. Mavukuyam, Yimi. Vukuyang on Nampanga, ankles on toes on knees on she'll be able to walk, not be weary. She'll have strength in her legs, her knees, her hips, her loin, everything will be healthy, her heart, her lungs. Bless her back, her spine, everything will be straight in her life, in her mind, leading up her arms, elbows, her fingers, her wrists. Pinikayanga, Sangavang, Mavukuyanga.
Mika Moan on Blessing Roy on the seven senses, her two ears. She'll be able to hear and listen, not to just people who are here on earth. She'll be able to hear and listen to those who passed on, the spirit people who will be with her in her life to help her, her family who's gone on before her. Bless her ears in a good way. She'll be able to hear it in a good way. Bless her two eyes. She'll be able to see, have vision, be able to dream. She'll be able to discern things, good, bad, evil. Bless her that she'll be able to have the spirit of discernment within her mind and heart to tell her what to do, what's right. Her nostrils, she'll be able to breathe the air that we breathe that you've given to us, Creator, the air that gives us life. And her mouth, I ask you to bless it, Creator. And whatever comes out of her mouth might be your spirit. She'll talk for you. She'll say good things. And she'll use the wisdom in her mind, which the spirit enters into our head, bless her brain, all the elements within her. And she'll be able to use wisdom, knowledge. She'll be patient. She'll be courteous and kind. She'll show the wisdoms that she has through the Spirit as you bless her that way. In a good way, Creator. Make it so that her life will be that way. Good. Moanga and Mekang Vukwe Yanga to the leader. I want to bless her, Moan. The sacred seven directions. She will be able to take this responsibility with your help. The help of our ancestors, the help of the people, all the faculty, staff, administration, all the students, and all her family here in southern Utah. Bless her with that spirit. The seven directions. Everything from the east, one, where the sun rises, where all good things come. May you come in your sun and bless her with that sunlight. Every day when she wakes up, may you let her know that life is good. Life is, this, this is the life that you've chosen for her at this time. And make it so, Creator. Bless her with everything good from the east, everything from the west, Creator. Bless her. As the sun goes down, the stars come out, the moon shines. Bless her with that. Those who have gone on, whose bodies are on the earth, bless their spirits. Help her, Creator. She won't be scared of. She'll be able to listen and hear it and see. See you move in the earth wherever she is. Bless her that way. And I ask you to bless her. All good things from the West will be upon her. Bless her with the sacred Big Dipper, that the Big Dipper stars will shine down upon her. And that sacred North Star will be her guiding light in life. As she fulfills this responsibility, she'll take vision of that North Star and be able to follow it and be guided in the correct way that you would want her to follow, Creator. And bless her that way. She looks upon the stars at night She'll see you. She'll be reminded of you. That she'll have great hope that you're with her in the hard decisions that she has to make as president. And I bless you everything from the north. Where we get the snow and the water, the cool breeze. As a woman, one, emirkan, mavukuyam, eroyam, the woman who is sacred, who gives us life, the woman who is the caretaker of the water, sacred water that we drink, the water that provides us life. I ask you to bless her that way, Creator. Wherever she is, wherever she goes, that water will be sacred to drink, and she'll be reminded of it. Then I ask you to bless her everything from the south, the warmth, when days get hard, trials come upon her, you wrap her in your arms in the warmth of the sun from the south, 
All, this, all spirits will be with her, comfort her in a good way to help her. Also, number five, Creator, everything above her, I ask you to bless her that way. The sun, the moon, the stars, the air that we breathe, all the animals in the sky, I ask you to bless her. Her mind will be open. She will have vision, dreams. She'll talk in a good way. The people will understand and that she'll hear in a good way that she will understand others as they talk to her. Open that conduit, Moam. Remarkable things will happen with the blessings from everything above us. Help her in her life with these blessings. Number six, bless everything underneath her. Our Mother Earth gives us life. Without Mother Earth, the things that we eat, things that we drink, the animals that we live on, the mountains, the trees, shrubs, water, flower, lakes, streams, everything. Mother Earth provides us. And as she walks this road, it's a new road in her life. I ask you to bless her, that those people who may walk with her will walk with her in a good way. And all the people here at this institution, the students, the faculty and staff and administration, all these good people here in Southern Utah, the community. I ask that they would be blessed, Creator. No harm or danger will come upon them as they travel. That they will be strong in spirit and the things that they need at this institution. Open the minds of those who support us, Heavenly Father, Creator, who I am. I also pray she will bless the students here that walk this campus. Ayakung, Chira Tu Vipong, Nubu, this land used to be ours a long time ago. Paiute country. Help us to have respect for her, and she'll help us in our life. And I bless her at that seventh blessing, seventh direction, direction. Everything right here in your heart, everything within you, all the ligaments and joints and muscles and bones, everything within you will be blessed in a good way. Your spirit, your spirit will be strong. As you listen, pay attention, you'll grow. You'll be surprised at how things are going to come to you. You'll be happy, those who work with you. I pray that there will be no conflict, that there will be resolve in everything that you do with those that you work with. Spirit of resolve, spirit of contention will be gone to help you in this plight. Not only you, but it's for everybody here in Southern Utah that we can all be proud that you carry this mantle, this responsibility hangs on all of us as we have respect for the Spirit and not be proud in who we are and what we've accomplished in life, but be glad that He has provided it for us and that He has provided this trail for us. And this is your trail. This is your new path. And I bless it that way. Amen.
Please welcome to the podium the chair of the Southern Utah University Board of Trustees, Jody Hart Wilson. Good afternoon and welcome honored guests, faculty, staff, alumni, students, and T-Bird family. On behalf of the Southern Utah University Board of Trustees, I welcome you to this historic day, the inauguration ceremony for President Mindy Benson. As an alumna of this institution, it is an honor for me to stand before you today as the chair of the Board of Trustees. Like many of you students and alumni here today, I came to SUU not knowing my exact, my exact life path or direction. But when I left, I did so with lifelong friends, experiences, knowledge, skills, and opportunities, and began my career. On this momentous day, we are celebrating a new beginning under the leadership of President Benson, as well as commemorating the 125 years of SUU. I want to express my gratitude to the 26-member Presidential Search Committee. Each member gave greatly of their time and devotion. SUU was served well by their efforts. The Presidential Search Committee was looking for a candidate that would be committed to preserving, fostering, and expanding SUU's mission to create an inclusive and innovative institution of higher education where students can achieve personal growth, civic responsibility, and professional excellence. When asked why President Benson wanted to serve as president, she said, I love SUU, and I have a deep desire to help shape its destiny and make a positive impact on the lives of its students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends. I know of no one more devoted to this campus, its students, and this community than President Benson. She is a compassionate and collaborative leader who is committed to SUU and ready to usher in the next 125 years. Thank you for being here today to support and celebrate the T-Bird family. Madam President, we are honored to join with you as we embark on your leadership journey. We congratulate you and look forward to the next chapter in SUU's history and feel confident we are in good hands. Please welcome to the podium to offer remarks, McKay Pullman, president of the SUU Student Association, Jason Matlock, president of the Staff Association, and Dr. Abigail Larson, president of the Faculty Senate. Thank you all for being here today. On behalf of the student body, we want to say thank you for being here. We also want to tell President Benson that we love you. And we are... <laughs> we are so excited for your focus on student well-being and your holistic approach to our wellness. We are excited for what the future has to offer and for what you will bring to the university. Hi, my name is Jason Matlock, and I'm a Staff Association President for this year. Uh, thank you for all of you being here today. It really means a lot. Um, yesterday, during the President's Convocation, we learned about the power of place. We learned about the legacy that our predecessors established at this institution, and their dream of carrying that legacy into our future. I'm confident that under President Benson's leadership, we will continue to thrive. President Benson, as you serve in this role, our hope is that you continue to lead us with authenticity, prioritize us, and allow us to help you in leaving a lasting legacy for future generations to come. Thank you, and go T-Birds. Hello. Welcome, everybody. It is so nice to see all of you here. And on behalf of SUU faculty, I hope you all enjoy the great festivities that are in store for the rest of today and tomorrow. With the help of Mindy Benson, we will beat Utah Tech tomorrow. <laughs> I 
On a side note, Mindy is amazing. When this summer when I was in the hiring committee meetings to represent faculty, I was surrounded by a cohort of 20 of my faculty and we were interviewing the final three candidates. And Mindy was the last to go. And when she was done giving her presentation, there was no doubt in my mind at all whatsoever who would lead us from this point on. And we are delighted that she accepted the position. Dr. David Lee is a proud professor emeritus of SUU who spent 32 years teaching and inspiring Thunderbirds and served as chair of the Department of Language and Literature. In 1997, he was appointed by former Governor Michael O. Levitt as Utah's first poet laureate and served in that role for five years. Dr. Lee's influence in raising public awareness of literacy and the heritage of Utah reached beyond the state's borders and across the nation. In 2001, First Lady Laura Bush invited Dr. Lee to the White House where she recognized his work and contributions. A celebrated teacher, author, poet, and a longtime friend of the Benson family, please welcome to the podium Dr. David Lee. When Mindy asked me if I would come. She said, would you come and read several of your poems? And I said, no, ma'am. I'll read you two. <laughs> I wrote this poem 20 years ago as I was getting ready to leave Southern Utah University after the 32 best years of my life where I became, for better and worse, who I am. The original title of the poem was Psalm written after reading Cormac McCarthy and taking a three hour hike to the top of Pine Valley Mountain. Well, people said that's longer than the poem. So I now just call it my Southern Utah poem has an epigraph from Soren Kierkegaard. Laughter is also a form of prayer. Right here, Lord, tether me to my shadow like a fat, spavined mule stuck sideways in tank mud, bawling for eternity. At midnight, when the stars slip their traces and race the moon like wild horses to their death in the darkness. Let my horse song twine with the night wind. May the bray of today's good laughter fall like a pitchy top branch from a tall yellow pine straight down to the mountain's bent and trembling knees. I hope. I heard on the 15th of July the news that Mindy would be our president. One of the most beautiful messages I've heard in my entire life. And I began this poem on that day. I've titled it, A Song for Mindy. I want to say this. I've known ben Mindy Benson for a minimum of 40 years. Her dad, Ken Benson, was one of my very favorite people and closest friends on this campus. Earthquake Muldoon. And one of the very fondest etched into my heart memories of my lifetime was a night 40 years ago when the Benson family came to our home in Paraguna for dinner and we had several hours of intense tall tales lying and laughter to shame the heavens. 
And that evening becomes the beginning of this sonnet that I wrote for Mindy. It's set back in the time of Ken and Donna and Mindy and Sharon and the Benson family. Moves into open time and then focuses for now. This is the first and probably the only time I will ever read this poem. So I'm going to change the title of it right now and add two words, with love. More than a pearled Dutch oven wood smoke from the sheep wagon campfire out behind Duck Creek's spruce shaded meadow. On a Saturday after the ball game fandango. More than a stiff bristle cone, pine wind, scenting the maze of pink and orange hoodoos above cedar breaks, or the dance of whistling swallows swooping over the escarpment. Beyond images, holding time and memory in the stone cups of immortality, is our bending toward today's moment, when the world seems to halt and gasp a day that shatters the boundaries of precedence and carves your name in granite. In 1976, an unknown gospel quartet from Tennessee wandered into the office of SUU's Director of Student Activities and offered to play a concert if they could keep what money they generated in ticket sales. Prior to the concert, the Student Activities Director invited the group over for a home-cooked meal with his family. That evening was the beginning of a 46-year friendship with SUU, the Benson family, and their little five-year-old daughter, Mindy. As the Oak Ridge Boys transitioned to country and rose to fame and stardom with number one hits, Grammy, Dove, CMA, and ACM awards, and an induction into Country Music's Hall of Fame, they would never forget the campus and community that gave them an opportunity and the family that made them feel right at home. Throughout the decades, they have returned regularly to SUU and Cedar City to perform and renew old friendships. While their touring schedule would not allow them to be with us in person, they join us in today, vi today via video to sing Thank God for Kids. Please welcome the Oak Ridge Boys. All right. Hello, Southern Utah University. We're in Owensburg, Kentucky. We've been in your big coliseum there many, many times, and Mindy Benson is the reason we've been there many times. We've been there with regular shows, Christmas shows, and uh, we love coming to Utah. We're so very proud of Mindy, a longtime friend, a longtime associate, a longtime business partner in many, many efforts. And we love Mindy and the fact that you've appointed her as the new president of Southern Utah University is a great thing. Yeah, Mindy! So we all congratulate Mindy Benson, as we've told her many times, you are Mindy Benson, and that's why these good things happen. We're going to sing a couple songs that are her favorites, especially this next one, and um, Mindy, we love you. Golden, let's do Thank God for Kids for Mindy. If it weren't for kids, have you ever thought there wouldn't be? No Santa Claus Or look what the store just brought Thank God for kids We'd all live in a quiet house Without Big Bird or a Mickey Mouse 
And Kool-Aid on the couch, thank God for kids. Thank God for kids, there's magic for a while. A special kind of sunshine in a smile. Did you ever stop to think or wonder why the nearest thing to heaven is a child? Daddy, how does this thing fly? And a hundred other where's and why? I really don't know, but I try. Thank God for kids. And when I look down in those trusting eyes that look to me, then I realize there's love that I can't buy. Thank God for kids. Thank God for kids. There's magic for a while. A special kind of sunshine and a smile. Did you ever stop to think or wonder why the dearest thing to heaven is a child? When you get down on your knees tonight, thank the Lord for His guiding light. And pray they'll turn out right Thank God for kids Thank God for grandkids too professional football career spanned more than 15 years in the NFL, primarily with the San Francisco 49ers. He was the most valuable player of Super Bowl 29 and the NFL's most valuable player for 1992 and 1994. In 2005, Steve was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. At the pinnacle of his NFL career, Steve couldn't turn down the request from his friend Mindy to participate in the opening ceremonies of the Utah Summer Games on three different occasions. Thousands of young athletes clamored to be near their Utah hero and Super Bowl MVP as he spoke to the athletes and carried the torch to begin the games. Following law school and his NFL career, Steve co-founded an a leading private equity firm in Palo Alto, California, and serves as its partner and chairman of the board. This summer, Steve's connection to SUU came full circle as he and his wife Barbara's eldest son, Braden, was an actor with the Utah Shakespeare Festival. Please welcome NFL Hall of Famer, Steve Young. I told I told President Benson that you're lucky I'm not going to sing. So, uh, her typical detail uh, she has worked out for my hood is uh, a hood that's special for my Juris Doctor that I got at BYU. And the first time I've been able to wear it since 1994. 1994, I won the Super Well, we won the Super Bowl, and I graduated from law school. And I'm not sure now, these 30 year, years later, that what was most important. And uh, I'm really grateful, so I, I'm honored to, to wear these robes uh, today. Uh, Governor Cox, it's great to be near you, dear friend, and uh, your leadership and uh, what you do for the state of Utah is just to be heartily congratulated. Thank you. Um, a year ago today, word got out that Interim President Benson was named. And for those of us that have known her almost, well, plus 30 years, uh, a newer uh, back then, uh, we were, I'm not going to say shocked, because that's not right, but, but just joyful glee of like, wow, that's amazing. 
And, the, um, and we knew each other back when uh, there's a number of my teammates at BYU, and two of them were particularly friends with Mindy, uh, Jim Herman, and Lee Johnson. And we got on a call together and talked about it and uh, uh, started to reminisce about the old days and the times that we were together and amazed that, that we were just kids. Uh, and the things that we did were kid things. And, uh, and, and what is ma amazing, that's all that's happened to us through the years. You think about all the uh, accomplishments and the challenges that have been met since those early years. And who could imagine uh, what was coming uh, for my life and for Mindy's life? As we reveled in hearing about the new President Benson, our conversation turned to qualities that we saw back then that would signal the possibility of today. And as we chatted, we all agreed that certainly integrity. Nobody has more integrity than Mindy Benson. It's e it was easy to see then, and it's easy to see now. Her diligence, she was intent at that point to get things done, and today it's no different. Her attention to detail, it's world famous. Her vision, we, mar we marked to each other that we could see all of us succeeding even so many years ago by the person that she is. That vision included a deep faith but the quality that most connected the dots for us in that conversation to now is what I'm going to call the spirit of abundance. We all agreed that in every interaction with her, you sensed her reflexive intent and concern for us. In fact, all these years later, what struck out to all of us was how much we felt loved, supported, important to her. It's a heaven-sent gift to see others. The needs, their hurts, and what is best for each of us. And what she was, as we look back, was a healer. And her healing force in our friendship. Our convocation became the regaling of stories. And somewhere, my buddy LJ said, you know, most people need to climb the ladder to success like this, but for Mindy, she's carried on the wings of a lifetime of relationships. That's the spirit of abundance. Ironically, the best example I have today for the spirit of abundance comes from my old football coach, Bill Walsh. You remember him in the 1980s? I joined the 49ers in 1987. They'd already won two Super Bowls. He was two or three generations ahead of everybody in the West Coast offense. He was in the, he's now in the Pro Football Hall of Fame because of that offense and because of the fact that he and all the championships that he won. But it's something that he did that no one really knows about that most impacted me. In 1987, he was frustrated that his minority assistant coaches weren't getting opportunities to be head coaches in the NFL. This is before the Rooney Rule came into existence. And he decided that what he was going to do was to package up in a physical repository. And he began to film every meeting. And there'd be a guy in a camcorder back in 1987, a big camcorder on the shoulder, and he would walk around and film everything that Coach Wall said and did for a number of weeks, even months. He collected all of the game plans, all of the playbooks, all of the speeches he had recorded. And he did this over a period of time. And at the end of it, he actually had a box. This repository was physical. He put it all inside. And then what was most amazing because here was somebody with proprietary information. It would end up being three generations ahead of everyone else in the NFL. And he knew it. And he knew that he could use it as a weapon or a tool. He decided to use it as a tool. And in this package, 
handed it to the next assistant coach who got the opportunity to be a head coach. And with that, his final comments, and I've heard this from the coaches that actually were in the room when he said it, handed them the box and said, I'll see you in the championship game. And it actually happened. We played the Green Bay Packers soon after in the championship game and, gotten beat, and got beat. And Brett Favre was the quarterback. And I went and watched, got, walked up to Brett Favre after the game. And I just was interested because I knew the toolkit. I knew what was in it. And I asked, what was Coach's big game speech last night in the Packer Hotel? He told me the speech. It was Bill Walsh's big game speech. He pulled it right out of the drawer. <laughs> used against us. How do I feel about that? You know how I feel about that? Is abundant. What's the legacy of acts like that? I can tell you as I travel around the NFL today, I'll be there Monday night for the game, I do pregame, and I'll see the spirit of abundance that sifted through the entire NFL. Coaches upon coaches have followed in those footsteps of that toolkit. I would say 90% of the coaches in the NFL are re recipients of the toolkit. And so the spirit of abundance is doing something beyond yourself. It's seeking beyond you. It's seeing others. Abundance is found in seeking others, in, uh, others' health and healing as a priority. Clearly, Coach Walsh decided his priority was the success of the people nearby. As SUU grows and flourishes at an exponential rate, you have the perfect person to lead you because the humans here on campus are first. It's reflexive. She can't help it. To her and your healing and well-being are her natural priority. There is strength in this quality. She will be immovable on this priority. This will be a place of abundance. I hope the spirit of the student body will take up this theme to watch for each other in this same spirit. Many people have watched out for me throughout my life. As a new member of the San Francisco 49ers in 1987, I joined a team with Joe Montana. He was the king. He's the Tom Brady at that time. He was the man. And I was brought in to compete against him. And you can imagine the awkwardness of that. One practice, I did something terrible, which was not unusual. <laughs> and over on the side, the other, some other players commented, yelled out some derogatory things about my ability and my potential. And everyone went quiet, because that wasn't usual. And I felt as awkward and lonely as you can imagine being in this place, this space that didn't feel safe. It felt like this wasn't a team that I felt a part of. Ronnie Lott, famous Hall of Fame safety, who was the leader of this team, stopped the practice, walked over to those fellows that were over here to my right, and said, I want to tell you about my father. I was raised by a man who told me that no matter where I went, no matter what I did, he had my back. And I want Steve Young to know, right now, that no matter where he goes or what he does, I have his back. The healing for me the place that he made for me on that team created that space for me to go on and do some amazing things. I don't know exactly what that, or if that hadn't happened, where I would be, but there was a spirit that Ronnie saw a need, stepped into the vacuum, and took it and created a space that allowed for me to feel a part of the team. And those guys that commented, became great friends. So it's in the spirit of I got your back 
that I made this t-shirt today. It's a Thunderbird SAU t-shirt. And on the back, all right? I got your back, IGYB. And I signed it, not because I wanted to sign it as a signature, I signed it because as a sign of my commitment. My commitment for her and her incredible journey and what she's gonna do here at SUU, I commit today. Mindy, President Benson, I got your back. And one last thing, a little token of memorabilia that I own that's very dear to me. On, I think it was July 18th, was the election or 16th? 16th. We were here on campus. My son was mentioned that he was in the Shakespeare, Utah Shakespeare Festival as an ensemble player, a working actor with a, getting a check every week. He was off the payroll for some time. It was amazing. But we were here on the 16th, and I saw Mindy that day in this hat, and I forced her, because she would not do it, to sign and autograph my hat. Mindy Benson, President, SUU. So today, my red tie is not a 49er red tie. It is a T-Bird SUU red tie. Way to go, President Benson. Governor Spencer Cox is the 18th governor of Utah and a sixth generation Utahn. He has dedicated most of his adult life to public service at the city, county, and state levels. His ability to work across party lines to find common sense solutions has contributed to Utah's unprecedented prosperity and the number one economy in the nation. Governor Cox is a strong advocate for rural issues and concerns and maintains his Southern Utah office on SUU's campus. He and his First Lady, Abby Cox, are the parents of four children and all three of their college-aged children are enrolled at SUU. Please welcome the governor of the great state of Utah, Spencer J. Cox. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed an honor to be here with you today. Steve, thank you for your message about abundance. I have to tell you very quickly that Steve Young practices what he preaches. Uh, I'll never forget the first day I got a text from Steve Young and uh, my family didn't believe me at all that it was from him. <laughs> just thanking me for the great work that was happening here in the state of Utah. He's always so thoughtful, and I'm grateful for his leadership. Now, I'm often asked, what is your favorite university in, in the state of Utah? And uh, much like my kids, governors are not supposed to have favorites. Um, but I can tell you, for the uh, last couple years and for the foreseeable future, it's a very easy call. Um, SUU is my favorite university in the state of Utah. <laughs> Now, of course, I can say that because my kids are here, and everybody understands that. But there's another reason that, it is, that I am, I'm so endeared to this place, and it is because of Mindy Benson. Now, I, re I remember talking to your former president, Scott Wyatt, once when he was the president of Snow College. And we were talking about presidents of, of, of institutions and of colleges. And he said, you know, um, there's a time and a season for a different kind of president all the time. And, and every institution needs a different kind of president at certain times during their history. And certainly we can look back at the history of SUU and presidents that have played a critical role at a critical time and the difference that they made when it was their turn to step forward and serve. And uh, he, I remember him saying something like, sometimes you need bulldozers and sometimes you need Ferraris. And um, sometimes you need Mindy Benson. And this is her time. And everyone I have talked to knows this and believes this. I hear this over and over again. Mindy is the right person at the right time um, in history for this place. 
And let me tell you, I, I want to share just a couple things with you today about why I think Mindy is the right, time, right person for this job. There are two things that I believe. Well, let me back up a little bit. We live in a very strange time. Institutions are, are under attack, and institutions are failing in ways that they have never done before. I, I have to tell you, I am an institutionalist in, in, in my heart. I believe in building institutions. In fact, I've, I've stopped referring to people very often as right or left on the political spectrum. Say that someone's far right or someone's far left. I don't know that that's particularly helpful anymore. In fact, sometimes the far right and the far left cross each other. I think we're in a circle. I don't know. We're going different ways. But um, I, I've started defining people as, as builders or destroyers. See, see I, I believe it is a time to build. I believe we need to build institutions. I believe we need to restore trust in institutions. Now, the Edelman Foundation has defined trust. They do a survey every year about trust in institutions all across the world. And, and it won't surprise you to learn that across the world, trust in institutions, political institutions, nonprofit institutions, business institutions, trust in the media are all falling across the world, but especially here in the United States. And they define trust in two ways. It's very simple. It's a formula for trust. And think about this in your personal lives, people you know, institutions, things you believe in. There are two things that are necessary for us to have trust. Um, the first is the thing that we're, we want to trust has to be competent. They have to be good at what they do. The second thing is they have to be ethical. They have to be good. So in order for us to improve trust, and, and I, I will say this, higher ed is under attack as well. Every parent, every student, every person in this country is reevaluating the value proposition of higher education in, in our country and in our state. And so we have to be able to answer that question, why is this important to me? Why should I trust this institution? And again, remember, to trust your neighbor or an institution like SUU, we have to be competent and we have to be ethical. We have to be good at what we do and we have to be good. I believe President Benson is the right person at the right time because She's one of the most competent and ethical people I have ever met, and I trust her. I trust her with this institution, but more importantly, I trust her with my three kids. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you there's something very special about Mindy, and that is she treats every student on this campus as if they were the governor's kid. Now, I, there are two things that I think this institution needs to focus on to be successful. And she knows this, and that's why she's the right person. The first and foremost has to be our students and giving them a world-class education. I just got back from the United Arab Emirates. Um, I went from Jerusalem, a city that is thousands of years old, to Dubai, a city that feels like it comes from the future. And I was talking there with the, uh, some leadership in the United Arab Emirates. I, I was talking to the, uh, he, he, uh, the Minister of Artificial Intelligence. They have a cabinet level position for artificial intelligence in Dubai. And he said, I, I was trying to figure out what they were doing and how they were having so much success. And he said, you have to understand something about Islam and you have to understand something about the Middle East. In the year 800 AD in Baghdad, there existed a place that was called the House of Wisdom. It was a place of knowledge, a place where the brightest minds from all over the Middle East and other places, Europe, um, Asia, would come. And they would come to exchange ideas. They would come to learn from each other. They were physicists, astronomers, engineers, mathematicians. The very brightest that the world had to offer came to Baghdad. It was the center, or at least one of the centers, of the knowledge world every bit as sophisticated and as advanced as everywhere else, in fact, ahead of Europe in so many ways. And then he said, what happened? How did we stop being that place? Well, in the year, I should write this stuff down, I want to say 1445, somewhere in there, 1440s, something happened, a new technology came out, the Gutenberg printing press. And the leaders of Islam at that time said, this is a danger to our people. The printing press, giving books to common people, 
will lead them astray. They will get lost. They will go with the ways of the world. They will forget our history and our heritage, our religion, our faith. They will lose themselves. And they banned the printing press. For 300 years, the printing press was banned. And what happened? Well, again, according to my friend, the minister of artificial intelligence and a leader in Islam, he said what happened was Europe got a 300-year head start on us. You see, you can't progress as a society without knowledge. Knowledge is the great equalizer. And so we ended up falling behind, living in poverty as Bedouins in the desert. He said that will never happen again in our country. And they're committed to that. And so I would say this. Universities are the place where our young people, and might I say especially our rural young people, can come and have an opportunity here at SUU to learn about the world, to learn about new ideas, scary ideas, different ideas, ideas that are bad and ideas that are good. We must protect freedom of speech on our campuses, whether it comes from the right or left, builders or destroyers, I don't care. This has to be a place where we can be challenged in our ideas. We have to protect the freedom of knowledge, the freedom of ideas, the freedom to share what we believe, even if we disagree, especially, especially when we disagree. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe in our young people. They're not as dumb as we sometimes think they are. They can handle hard things. They can handle hard ideas. They can handle bad ideas. They can find their way through that. It's okay. We're not brainwashing them. We're giving them an opportunity to learn new things and to reject those things. Now, the second piece of this, I think, is almost as important as the first. First, it's all about students. Second, it's also about community. A university does not exist in a vacuum. A university exists in a place, and this place is Cedar City, Utah. And for 125 years, for 125 years, people have sacrificed and they have given of themselves to build this place. And there is a culture and a history and a heritage here that the rest of the world might not agree with, that some of the ideas that we share on campus may be very distinct from. But we should honor and always preserve and teach that history and that heritage. And we must make sure that the community feels welcome here, that the community is part of the decisions that are being made here, that the community is part of this institution. Let me share, I read some thoughts yesterday from a, a, a man who, his name is David Heinemeyer Hansen, and he was speaking about this a little bit, and he said, he said something that I felt was profound. He said, the collective wisdom of the ages as passed down to us through tradition, culture, and law is often very hard to reason specifically about after the fact. But that doesn't mean the wisdom isn't present just because it's difficult to articulate. The evolution and molding of social mores across the ages might well be like the Egyptian pyramids. Hard to understand after the fact, the subdivisions of reason lost to ages, but no less profound or structurally sound. Beware of anyone who tells you that you have to either choose between knowledge or culture and history. Those are fa false dichotomies, and destroyers on both sides of the political spectrum will try to convince you that you have to choose. Here we state firmly that we do not have to choose. We can learn the ways of the world and be true to Cedar City, Utah. That's what I expect. That's what I know will happen because I trust President Mindy Benson. May God bless her as she leads this institution into the future. Thank you. David R. Wollstone-Hume was appointed Commissioner of Higher Education for the Utah System of Higher Education in 2020. He provides state-level leadership and oversight for Utah's 16 public colleges and universities. Previously, he served as Vice President of Statewide, Campus, statewide Campuses for Utah State University. 
the Utah Commissioner of Technical Education, and the President of Uinta Basin Applied Technology College. Please welcome the Utah State Commissioner of Higher Education, Dr. Dave Wollstone-Hume. <clears throat> Steve, thank you for your wonderful remarks. Governor, thank you for being a great governor. Um, thank you for the support of higher education in the state of Utah. And just as importantly, thank you for pushing us toward excellence. Um, he's absolutely right. Higher education in many ways is under attack and we've got a lot of work to do. And to, really to the State Board of Education, thank you for the wisdom of appointing President Benson as your next, uh, next president of Southern Utah University. Um, president Benson, on behalf of the Utah system of higher education and your peers, across the state. I want to congratulate you on today's inauguration. You've inherited a very strong university from your predecessors, some of who are with us today on the platform. You already met President Scott Wyatt, President Mike Benson, President Steve Banyan, and former Commissioner and Interim President Rich Kendall. I encourage you to call on these individuals and presidents across the system in difficult and stressful times, which I promise you they will be there. Your peers across the state, the board, and I stand ready to support your success. Having watched you work and work closely with you since you were named interim president in July of 2021, and then president this last July in 2022, I am confident that with your strong community ties and your love for students, you are the right person for this job at the right time. Southern Utah University is an amazing institution and has achieved many milestones the past few years. Just to cite a few, USU News and World Report ranked you this year as one of the best regional universities in the West. These rankings evaluate more than 1,500 colleges and universities on up to 17 different measures of academic quality, something SUU is in no short supply of. Southern Utah University has again received national recognition as one of the renowned colleges of distinction. For the 2022-2023 school year, SUU received additional recognition in business, education, engineering, nursing, career development, and military support. And the National Council on Teacher Quality has recognized Southern Utah University's elementary education program this year as one of the best for ensuring future elementary teachers have the essential content and skills they need to teach mathematics in our schools. By any measure, Southern Utah University has and will continue to flourish with you at the helm. Throughout your career, you have prioritized the needs of Southern Utah University, faculty, staff, and students, and especially students. Mental health is always at the top of your mind for the students, and also campus culture. You have also strengthened community and university partnerships, and can I underline community partnerships there. These values are critically important in higher education today and I challenge you to continue making these values a cornerstone of your presidency. As commissioner, my message to our state universities, college, technical colleges is very clear. Over the next 10 years, we must do better. A 10% increase in our Utah high school graduates assessing post-education, post-secondary education in any of our institutions, whether that be our public universities, colleges, and our technical colleges, a 10% improvement in our collective completion rates across the state, a 20% increase in connecting our graduates to the most in demand, highest paying occupation to sustain Utah's best in the nation economy. It will require continued participation from SUU, a pillar in the Southern Utah community to achieve these outcomes. On behalf of the Utah System of Higher Education, Mindy, I look forward to continuing to see your successful leadership in action and the great things you will do for Southern Utah University. Congratulations. Jessa Lee Anderson is Vice Chair of the Utah Board of Higher Education, the governing body for the Utah System of Higher Education. She previously served as Chair of the Salt Lake Community College Board of Trustees and a member of the Westminster College Board of Trustees. She is active in a community affairs and serves on numerous boards and councils. Hey. Today, Vice Chair Anderson will deliver the board's charge and conduct the investiture of President Benson. Please welcome to the podium, Vice Chair of the Utah Board of Higher Education, Jessely Anderson.
Thank you. President Benson, it is now my responsibility and privilege to deliver to you a formal charge on behalf of the Utah Board of Higher Education. Inaugurations offer us the opportunity to reflect on the past, what brought us here, our successes and failures, and a chance to look to the future with joy and optimism for what's to come. I stand here simply amazed that it's been more than a year since we began the presidential search process, a time that generates uncertainty through which you led the university with confidence and strength as interim president. Southern Utah University attracted a number of highly qualified candidates from across the nation who the board considered. But out of this extensive process, it became clear that we had an exciting opportunity to appoint a truly invested and remarkable leader. The Utah Board of Higher Education selected you, Mindy Benson, as the 17th president of Southern Utah University for your incredible talent, institutional knowledge, and experience. SUU can achieve great success under the right leader, and you are that leader. You are a perfect fit for SUU now and for the future. I urge you to honor and advance SUU's mission to be a dynamic teaching and learning community that engages students in experiential education, leading to personal growth, civic responsibility, and professional excellence. Doing so will keep the university and the surrounding community on an upward trajectory and show anyone who endeavors that they can access and complete higher education. I want to echo the words of Commissioner Wollstonehume and challenge you to continue to prioritizing the needs of Southern Utah University faculty staff, students, mental health resources, and campus culture. Remember that you are part of a system of 15 other exemplary institutions that you can collaborate with, lean on, and share in their successes. With this alliance, we can better serve all of Utah and improve the lives of countless graduates and their family, families. President Benson, we also want to recognize and thank your incredibly supportive family who have strengthened this community and university for generations. Please know you have the support of the Utah Board of Higher Education and our highest regard as you lead this great university. President Benson, please join me. This is heavy. <laughs> Congratulations. It's official. The 17th president of Southern Utah University, President Mindy Benson. We will now hear a musical selection, Call of the Champions by John Williams, performed by the SUU Symphony Orchestra and Choir, directed by Dr. Adam Lambert and Dr. Andrew Briggs.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium the 17th president of Southern Utah University, President Mindy Benson. Thank you so much for your support and your love. And I'm not going to make it through this, so let's all just start crying. That was glorious. Oh my goodness, that was spectacular. Thank you for sharing your talents. They didn't know when they chose that number that I was live at the 2002 Winter Olympics when I saw that number played live for the first time. And I was hosting John Williams, the composer of that number. So it's pretty cool when all my worlds collide here today that that number is represented. Thank you for that glorious musical. <clears throat> It's 100% surreal to be standing here today. I helped plan the last three presidential inaugurations there here on this stand. And I know how much work this is to plan these. So thanks to the event team. And you got an event person in as president, so we're having a production today. <laughs> So you know I'm much more comfortable in planning the inauguration than standing up here today. And I wish I could stand in front of you completely comfortable and feeling like I absolutely belong here. But I want to be vulnerable for a minute and share some things with you and I hope you take inspiration from my story and from my vulnerability. I came across this quote and it resonated with me and I want you to think about this for you. Maybe my story was never meant to be one of a woman who boldly took on all of life's challenges and what-ifs without fear or flinching, but that of a woman who was absolutely terrified of the challenges and what-ifs and still showed up every single day to life anyway, and she did it afraid. But she persevered. Isn't that the mark of true courage? Students, women in the audience, and anybody who needs to hear this, I'm standing in front of you today absolutely terrified of what's ahead, but I still showed up to this job. Show up in your lives every single day, even if you're afraid. Sometimes things turn out better than you could have ever imagined, like me here being, being here today. Thank you all for showing up for me today. I'm humbled and honored by your presence and never could have imagined this. Thank you. Thank you for the great honor of being installed as your 17th president of Southern Utah University. Thank you to the students and faculty and staff and the wind symphony and the orchestra and the choral conductors. Thank you all so much for your inspiring music and the work that you did to turn that around in the first few weeks of school. Special thanks to Vice Chair Anderson, Governor Cox, Commissioner Wollstone Hume, Chair Wilson, Dave Lee, Steve Young, McKay, Jason and Abby, Travis Parashants and the Oak Ridge Boys for participating on this program today. I don't think you ever thought you'd hear all those names together. <laughs> I want to recognize and thank a number of people today. I want to begin by thanking our students. Thank you for being here. Our students are at the heart of SUU and why we are here. You inspire and you motivate us. Thank you. I would also like to thank members of the Utah State Board of Higher Education. Thank you for entrusting me to lead this place we so dearly love. Members of our SUU Board of Trustees, state and local government officials, presidents and delegates from other colleges and universities, my predecessors in this role at SUU, President Stephen Benyon, Michael Benson, Interim President Rich Kendall, and Scott Wyatt. Thank you for your examples of leadership and your extraordinary contributions to SUU. <laughs> to our SUU Emeriti, I will carry on your legacies. 
To our extraordinary faculty and staff who educate and serve our students, thank you. Thanks to members of our university advisory boards for your service and our loyal, dedicated alumni and friends, including my former student government leaders, my dad's former leaders, my event management alumni, some are here, some are running events, and current and former national alumni board members who have traveled from near and far. I truly love you all. To my friends, my college classmates, my colleagues and mentors who have supported me, and a special thanks to my mentor, Dr. Sterling Church. Can I just say I'm really glad cell phones did not exist when we were in college. We had a lot more fun. Special thanks to the inauguration committee and our events team. You are the very best. But I'm not getting through this one, but I'll try. I express my love to my family and my four siblings and my nieces and nephews all are here today. You fill my heart and you are my happy place. You're my biggest cheerleaders and I wouldn't be here without your love and support. Thank you. I suddenly got my dad's jeans where I cry at everything, especially Kleenex commercials. Wilbur Wright of the Wright Brothers Aviation fame, when asked for the formula of his success, replied, pick out a good father and mother and begin life in Ohio. <laughs> like him, I owe so much to the fortunate circumstances of where and to whom I was born. My mother was a strong, fierce, and resilient woman with a loving heart. My father, who I felt here today, was a giant of a man and a strong athlete whose heart was as big and tender as he was. I am who I am because of them, and I honor them today. I'm fortunate to have been born and raised here in Cedar City. I am a product of this wonderful community. Many in this audience, and I'm not kidding when I say this, have helped raise me. This is a close-knit community who rally around each other and believe that anything is possible. Thank you for your support and encouragement and for believing in me even when I didn't believe in myself. You may be interested to learn that I am not only the first female president, but also the first president in SUU's history to have been born and raised in Cedar City and educated at SUU. I represent all of you. And I do not take this responsibility lightly, and I will do all I can to maintain your trust and confidence. I'm also a product of this campus. For those of you who have been waiting for some choice pictures, here we go. <laughs> I have loved SUU for as long as I can remember. As a little girl, I grew to love the university by attending countless student activities and events with my dad, who served as director of student activities. In fact, I'm named after a student leader who was crowned Miss SUSC the year I was born, Melinda Whitaker, and she is here with us today. In my youth, I spent my summers working at the Utah Shakespeare Festival as a tart girl. I've been asked for evidence, and there it is. And later, I became a house manager. There's also proof that my hair changed through the decades. As a college student here, I discovered my passion for people and events, developed lifelong friendships, and was mentored by caring faculty, staff, and administrators. And for the past 27 years, I have been fortunate to work among cherished colleagues, students, alumni, and friends, even serving in the same position in student activities that my dad once held. I love SUU. It's not only in my blood, it is who I am. This inauguration with its symbolism and timeless tradition is so much bigger than the investiture of a new president. Though this is pretty cool. It has the names of all the past presidents and I will carry on their legacies. And apparently I'll do hard things if it involves jewelry. <laughs> <clears throat> this special occasion is an opportunity for our T-Bird family to pause and remember our heritage and the foundation upon which we are built. To celebrate who we are today and the many ways we positively impact the lives of students, families, and communities, and to look ahead and envision a bold and boundless future for Southern Utah University. 
As we reflect upon the past 125 years of history, it is important to remember those who, to paraphrase Emerson, went where there was no path and left a trail. Early founders who dreamed, sacrificed, and toiled to establish this place of learning, followed by generations of students, faculty, staff, and citizens who, with courage and conviction, have been pioneers in their own right. These pioneers are heroes. This is a university born of heroes. Heroes such as Neil Bladen and those intrepid townsmen who braved freezing temperatures and deep winter snow to secure the lumber to construct Old Main. And Mary Corlett, who organized and distributed all of the food, supplies, and equipment needed for the lumbering operations. Heroes such as Milton Benyon, the first principal and faculty of the Branch Normal School in 1900. And these six students were the first graduates of the Branch Normal School in 1900. We must also consider modern day heroes, like theater professor Fred C. Adams and his wife Barbara, who in 1961 founded the Utah Shakespeare Festival. Let's give a hand. Being that tart girl, Fred taught me a lot of who I am. And State Senator Dixie Levitt, who in 1965 heroically fought to pass the legislation that made us an independent four-year degree-granting institution under President Royden Braithwaite. In 1982, and I'm going to point at her and ask her to stand up. In 1982, 40 years ago from right now, Shelley Benson was elected as the first female student body president in SU's history. She became a hero to many, including me, her 11-year-old sister. Thanks for being my role model. Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Why do I even try to talk about my family? Who knew we'd be blazing such trails together, Shelley? These individuals and so many other people throughout our history have blazed paths of opportunity and progress for all of us. We truly are a university born of heroes. Southern Utah University is thriving today because we are standing on the shoulders of those who came before us. But heroes are not some relic of the past. They are all around us. We see heroes teaching and mentoring and serving our students. We see heroes beautifying campus, serving meals, and coaching our student athletes. We see heroes volunteering on boards, hiring our graduates, and donating your time and resources. And this summer, we saw a hero in Jody Hart Wilson as she became the first woman to serve as chair of the SU Board of Trustees. And just a few weeks ago, I met a new group of pioneering heroes, our first ever doctoral students in our new Doctorate of Clinical Psychology program. Our university is full of heroes, past and present, and each has played a role in helping SUU flourish and prosper today. It's almost unimaginable that our early founders could have envisioned what that fledgling school they established would become today. Let's compare. In the fall of 1898, those first faculty members taught 118 students. Today, SUU has 1,100 faculty and staff and over 14,000 students. <laughs> SUU was the seventh fastest growing master's level university in the country over the last decade growing by 75% and attracting students from all 29 counties, all 50 states, and 77 foreign countries. I loved seeing those international students and those international flags come in today. SU has grown from 18 course subjects in 1898 to more than 150 undergraduate programs and 32 graduate and certificate programs. And we've maintained our commitment to a personalized education, encouraging deep and meaningful connections among our faculty, staff, and students, which has led to increased student retention and graduation rates. 
SUU has greatly expanded our online offerings, and we provide the nation's most affordable online bachelor's degree for $9,000. We enjoy a strong symbiotic partnership with Cedar City, and we contribute to the economic vitality of our community and region. SUU is nimble, innovative, and responsive to market opportunities, including our three-year degree, our dual enrollment partnership with Southwest Tech, and our numerous partnerships with industry. And as the University of the Parks, we place hundreds of students in internships with our state and national parks and with rural health and local, state, and national government. We enrich the cultural life of our community and region through our Division I athletic program, Tony Award-winning Utah Shakespeare Festival, Southern Utah Museum of Arts, the Larry H. Miller Utah Summer Games, and the exceptional student productions and performances from our College of Performing and Visual Arts, such as these that you heard today. And our loyal and committed alumni and friends make so much of our success possible. You mentor our students, hire our graduates, volunteer on boards, trust us to educate your children and grandchildren, and you donate your resources. Thank you. While SUU has many accomplishments for which we can be justifiably proud, higher education is facing some serious challenges. Students, parents, and taxpayers are increasingly concerned about the cost of a college education rising student debt, and the value of a higher education. Universities are concerned about the decline in student enrollments due to a looming demographic cliff. And on college campuses, record numbers of students are struggling with mental health issues, as are the faculty and staff who support them. In spite of these and other challenges confronting higher education today, I am incredibly optimistic about SUU's future. This institution has faced greater difficulties in our past and have overcome them. And facing one of our stiffest challenges in memory due to the pandemic, our faculty, staff, and students rose to the occasion and displayed extraordinary commitment, ingenuity, adaptability, and resilience. We have and we will overcome hard things. <laughs> to meet the challenges ahead, to seize upon our current momentum and to help shape the future of our university, I ask our campus community to consider focusing on five important areas of opportunity for us. These five areas will provide a strong foundation upon which we together can build in the months and years ahead. Increase access and affordability, cultivate a culture of caring, enhance well-being and student success, enrich the academic experience, and expand, an alum, uh, hello, expand alumni and community engagement. Opportunity number one, increase access and affordability. I believe an SUU education should be available and affordable to anyone who is prepared and desirous of a college degree or credential. As a, okay, me too. As a state-supported university, our primary focus is to educate Utahns and 70% of our student body are from Utah. But there is more we can do. Throughout our history, an SUU education has provided economic and social mobility and offered our graduates a better life. But not every Utah has found college accessible or affordable. A pioneer of American public schools, Horace Mann, called education the great equalizer of the human condition. Governor, I'm glad we could both quote that. We're, good. We're all thinking. But that's only if people are afforded the opportunity of an education. I believe we have an obligation to our state and to our society to make an SUU degree available to everyone with the ambition to pursue it, including the socioeconomically disadvantaged and historically underrepresented. As we expand opportunities for Utah students, we will continue to welcome with open arms students from other states and around the world. Our enrollment growth will be sustainable and balanced to ensure the, that we have provided campus with the appropriate resources to serve our students and our, to ensure our community can accommodate our growth. By the way, if you are a developer and interested in building student housing, we sure need to talk. <laughs> mm -hmm. While the majority of our students want a traditional face-to-face -face college experience, we must meet the needs of the fastest-growing group of students, working adults age 25 and older. 
There are 39 million people in the U.S. alone who attended college but didn't graduate. I challenge us to become a leading public university in helping these students cross the finish line. We can do this by offering accessible, affordable, flexible, and high-quality online degrees. And it shouldn't matter whether these students live in Delta, Des Moines, or the DR Congo. Number two, cultivate a culture of caring. A pioneer in the airline industry, Southwest founder Herb Kelleher, once said, leading an organization as much about soul is as it is about systems. The soul of SU is our people, our students, faculty, staff, alumni, friends, community, local and state leaders, and governing boards. As president, among my highest priorities is to help cultivate a culture of caring among the 65,000 members of our T-Bird family. The T-Bird family is broad and diverse and consists of people from all over the world with different backgrounds, opinions, and experiences. We know not all feel as if they belong. Together, let's cultivate a culture of caring and belonging where members of our T-Bird family experience four powerful words. I want each of you to feel accepted, supported, engaged, and valued. Let's make the effort and take the time to get to know one another, to really listen to one another, to give each other the benefit of the doubt, and let's remember that everyone is dealing with something and could benefit from understanding, empathy, patience, tolerance, and compassion. In the Harvard study of adult development, one of the world's longest studies on human health, the researchers indicate that the most surprising finding in their, relationship, in their study is that close relationships are what keep people happy throughout their lives. Those ties protect us from life's discontent and are better predictors of long and happy lives than social IQ, social class IQ, or even genetics. They also found that loneliness kills. The study concludes that the key to happiness is relationships, relationships, relationships. And Steve, I'm glad you touched on relationships. That is at the core of who I am. At SUU, let's create a place where our faculty and staff thrive and learn to build their career here. Let's create a place so welcoming that when our students arrive here, they don't feel like they left home, but they feel like they are home. And when they graduate and become alumni, that T-Bird spirit never leaves them. Welcome home. We've already launched a culture committee to enhance our caring culture. I pledge my full support to this initiative and look forward to collaborating with all of you to create an environment where everyone feels accepted, supported, engaged, and valued. Let's enhance well-being and student success. A central theme of my administration will be focusing on student success. We want to help students succeed in the classroom, persist and graduate at even higher rates, and are well prepared for graduate school, the workforce, or other meaningful contributions. We want to help students grow and develop personally and socially to become the very best versions of themselves. We want to make a difference in their careers, their communities, and beyond. To achieve student success, we must gain a comprehensive understanding of what the needs of our students are. We know that a student's academic success is significantly impacted by their mental, emotional, physical, social, and financial well-being. A student who is lonely, depressed, or struggling to buy their next meal is not able to give their academics the time and attention it deserves. Let's focus on meeting each student where they are and connecting them with the comprehensive support they need to thrive in life and in the classroom. Higher education, including SUU, is facing a mental health crisis. 75% of all college students experience some sort of mental health crisis and anxiety and depression are at an all-time high among college students. We've convened a mental health task force, found innovative solutions to confront the mental health challenges our students are facing, and work with student leaders to bring a student health clinic back to campus. We will continue to work closely with health care providers, the state of Utah, and in partnership with the Utah System of Higher Education to make strides, dramatic strides, in addressing this critical issue. But it's not enough to meet the needs of our students. 
As someone once said, we must take care of the people who take care of the people. And faculty and staff, I'm looking at you. Our dedicated faculty and staff work hard every day to provide learning, support, and care for our students, and we must care for all of you. We must provide the resources and support you need. To take care of others, we begin by taking care of ourselves. We need to find balance, a sustainable pace, and give kindness to ourselves, the same kindness we would offer our friend. We can't give what we don't have. Your coworkers and your students need you, your talents, your care and support, so please take care of yourself first and foremost. Employee well-being is also a high priority of our staff and faculty leadership, and I look forward to working with all of you to enhance the well-being of our campus. Let's enrich the academic experience. Since its inception, the hallmark of this university has been to our caring faculty and staff who provide high-quality personalized learning for our students. This is who we are at our core and we must not deviate. Let's continue to increase the use of student-centered and evidence-based teaching practices and provide academic support services to improve student learning outcomes. Let's expand our experiential learning opportunities inside and outside of the classroom, increase public and private sector internships, and enhance the co-curricular experiences that align with academic programs. Given the changing job market, let's ensure that our academic programs align with local, regional, and state growing workforce needs and market demands. And we must continually look at new models of educational delivery including additional certificate programs, stackable and micro-credentials, and we will continue to partner with employers to offer professional development and programming needs tailored to their unique needs. SUU has a history of being nimble, innovative, and adaptable to new ideas. In this ever-shifting educational landscape, we will continue to identify strategies to remain relevant, rigorous, and responsive to the needs of our students and our employers. Let's expand alumni and community engagement. The relationships we enjoy in the community, region, and state are among our alumni and friends throughout the world, elevate SUU's stature and benefit our university in meeting our opportunities and challenges. SUU must also be a great community partner and serve as an economic engine for our region and beyond. We will work with businesses business leaders, government officials, and the greater community to spur economic development and job creation in our community and our region. We will leverage our relationships with alumni, friends, foundations, and corporations to launch an ambitious fundraising campaign to help SUU fulfill its mission. This campaign will help us fund facilities, faculty, endowments, scholarships, equipment, and programs. I'm eager to engage our advisory boards and enlist our alumni and friends in this vital campaign to transform SUU's future. And at the same time, we will launch a national brand campaign for SUU. We want the entire state, the Intermountain West, and targeted markets throughout the nation to know of the extraordinary work being done here by all of you. How can we seize upon these five areas of opportunity to help shape the destiny of SUU in years to come? I suggest focusing on three Ps, people, purpose, and place. We will be people-centric. Our people are our highest priority. More important than beautiful facilities, efficient processes, and other, any, or any other priority. Our work here at SUU begins and ends with our people, our students, employees, alumni, and friends, and the positive and meaningful relationships we develop and enjoy with each other. We will be purpose-driven. We are here to change lives. In the fire of 18, uh, 1666 that leveled London, the world's most famous architect, Christopher Wren, was commissioned to rebuild St. Paul's Cathedral. The story is told that one day, as the architect was surveying the work, he came upon three bricklayers working near one another. He asked the first worker what he was doing, and the laborer replied, I'm laying bricks. When he asked the second bricklayer the same question, the worker replied, I'm building a wall. When the architect asked what the third bricklayer was doing, the man enthusiastically replied, I'm building a great cathedral to the heavens. All three bricklayers were doing the same work, but with vastly different perspectives. 
The story of the bricklayers causes me to reflect upon the men and women of this community in 1897. When these ranchers, miners, and community women toiled, sacrificed, and suffered to build Old Main, they were doing more than constructing a building. They were driven by a higher purpose. They were building a cathedral, our campus that we enjoy today. Their work was fueled by a dream that the lives of their children and their children's children would be given the transformative gift of a college education. May we live our collective vision and see our purpose as changing lives and building our students, our campus, and our communities, not merely laying bricks. We will be place empowered. The natural beauty of our campus should be matched by a campus environment where everyone feels accepted, supported, engaged, and valued. SUU will be a place where we find fulfillment and happiness because of our meaningful relationships, and where we learn and grow, build memories, and where we write a shared narrative of experiences which tie generations together and define who we are as individuals and as T-birds. Let's commit to leave this place, our community, and our world better tomorrow than it is today. As we celebrate this 125th anniversary of our founding, literally our first classes were held 125 years ago this past Tuesday, we stand at a defining moment in our university's story. The eyes of history are upon us. The hopes and dreams of our founders sustain us. Together, let's dedicate ourselves to meeting this moment. Together, let's write the next exciting chapters in SUU's inspiring story. And together, let's create a future brimming with promise and possibility. My dear friends, I am deeply honored and humbled by this opportunity to lead our beloved Southern Utah University. I pledge to devote my energy, effort, and ability to serving you. And I ask you to join me by lending your extraordinary talents in helping propel this great university forward so that the chapters we write in our university's story are as epic and inspiring as our rich and remarkable past. Thank you. President Mindy Benson. This concludes the inauguration ceremony. The festivities continue now on the library quad with the inauguration celebration. Everyone is invited. The party continues tonight at 7.30 with Forever Red held on the upper quad featuring live music and a stunning fireworks display celebrating 125 years of SUU. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. is the homecoming parade down University Boulevard. And at 4 p.m., the homecoming tailgate party begins outside of Eccles Coliseum. The capstone of homecoming begins at 6 p.m. with a football game at Eccles Coliseum. And we encourage all to join together to cheer our mighty T-Birds on as they take on rival Utah Tech Trailblazers. We invite all of you to join us for a celebration beginning right now on the Library Quad, located outside to the south and east of this building. Enjoy refreshments and mingle with President Benson. Again, everyone is invited to the reception on the Library Quad. 
Thank you for joining us today. It's a celebration.